Yeah, it's interesting. I, when I said the numbers were good, they were actually a little higher than what I'm looking at now, but the icon next to it is green right now, whereas before it was red. So I'm not exactly sure what the icon means. I thought it meant whether you were over a threshold or not, but now I'm thinking it might mean something different. Oh. Yeah, we just may have uh, time travel traveled. How's it now, Coding Gorilla? Awesome. Okay, good. So we're maybe in a better, better. Uh, there we go. Yeah. All right. Sounds like we're in better. All right. Good. Glad we've. Uh, glad that was. I was actually like, ah, is this gonna be worth it or not? Looks like it is. Okay, we're in the presence now. Good. 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 That's where I want you to be. Um, Okay, so we're an update uh, game, in-game creature here, and I need to work on conditions here. So this is just down in TypeScript, and we all I did is I uh, I came in here and I added uh, where's my in-game creature? Let's go jump to it. I added this line right down here in TypeScript, and I added this line of code here because we've got a constructor that's gonna take a DTO coming from a signal R, and we're just grabbing that property and assigning it here locally to this one, uh, because this one's got a function called get set image or URL and may have other functions we add later. So we wanna actually work with something real that we can call methods on. So that's what's going on here with this code. All right, back up to this space here. We're still in edit and continue. Uh, this I think is going to fail through edit and continue. I need to stop and restart because Jason doesn't like it when I add new properties here um, with edit and continue. So um, when I say it doesn't like it, it means we've done this and nothing gets sent across. And when we restart, everything seemingly works. Uh, so let's go down here, look at conditions. So here toggle condition is there. This is code actually could work, I think. If we set a breakpoint and run, are we out of no errors, I bet, right? Yeah. Let's go run it. Jason. Jason is J-S-O-N, Jetson. And he's not really causing too many problems. It's just that I'm making those changes. What is this? Missing method. Okay, yeah. Sometimes we get this with edit and continue. Let's just get out of here. We'll, we'll reset and restart. No worries. <laughs> Yeah, JSON serialization, you probably know. You're just giving me, yeah, I, I can see by your icon face. Giving me a hard time. All right, so I wanna go in there here and I just wanna test, uh, I wanna test this code right here. I got a breakpoint. All right, so here we go, we're up and loaded. Uh, let's go get the stream deck up. Let's see. Uh, let's see who is targeted. Anybody targeted? I hit the show targets button. Nobody is. So we'll come in and we'll target nine through 12. Then I'll hit conditions and I'll hit blinded. And now we should get our breakpoint. And now this should all work because it's the same before now that person is blinded and we should get four of these. That creature, I should say, is blinded there. And uh, one more, and this should be the last one. Now run it, and then let's hit blinded again to toggle it back the other way, or maybe hit charmed first. So we'll just uh, step in here. Now it's blinded or charmed. Sweet. Clear this, I'm gonna run it, and uh, set a breakpoint here for the clearing of the, just to verify that. So I'm gonna click on Charmed on the Stream Deck, and uh, now this should go from Blinded and, or, or Charmed to just Blinded, sweet. So that's all working. Toggle Condition is here. Now Toggle Player Condition does, uh, calls Update UI for Player Stats and then Update Player State in Game. I think we want to call this. That's what I think I want to do. I got to do a rename up here. I'm just going to kill it for a second. And I'm going to rename it. So I wanted to change it to stats. That's what I wanted to do. Uh, so I'm going to call this from the end of this. 
like that. Okay. All right. Let's run and then switch back over into um, TypeScript. This is where my SignalR connections come in, right here. And Build is canceled. What's my problem here? What a mess. Oh, that's why I was getting it. All right. Okay. All right, there we go. I do have an update in game creatures though. Maybe I should do that call instead. That would certainly be more consistent. That would be definitely more consistent. Let me hit the button. Get the break point. So we're going to say update in game creatures instead. This is going to grab every creature that's on screen and send them in, including those conditions. I think it's better. Okay. That's what I think we're going to do. Okay. And now I'm thinking, okay, I've done some good coding today. <laughs> Let's stop. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, oh wait, I'm only halfway through. All right. So we're going to go to update in game creatures, which is now exclusively out in the back game. <laughs> Processing game creature command. There's the update call. Pretty sure we're gonna go there. Then we come out here. Um, the in-game creature manager. I think the in-game creature manager is going to have the instance, is going to hold on to the instance of the um, condition manager that we just created. That's what I think. We lose symmetry in that the dragon back game has it. And then over here, instead of, I'm sorry, the dragon front game has it. And then over here, instead of the dragon back game having it, we, we, um, we move it to the end game uh, creature manager instead. But there's a lot of, there's enough similarity. It's going to work. I'm just going to do that. So we're going to say condition manager. Constructed here. Um, in load resources. There's my load resources call there. 
And I've got an update call. I'm pretty sure this is coming from the, uh, yep, it's the uh, Dragonback game. Uh, so I'm just going to come in here and we're going to update here. We're going to call update. Ooh, it needs more. Shoot. It needs an I get player X. Oh no. We might be in trouble. Because our get player X implementer, we got we might have to uh uh, Smoothie says, ooh, things are better. I can see chat and FPS is up uh, to 30 now instead of uh, 8. Good. Interesting. Um, okay. The good news is, is that the condition manager is not using any of that. All right. So... The, I, I thought we were in a bad in trouble, but we don't need any of that. So I'm going to take those out of there. I'm going to take this out of here. And now we're going to jump back. And now we can just pass in the timestamp here. Okay, that's a phew, that's a relief. <laughs> hey, Carmen Jacotti, can you do me a big favor? <laughs> Could you get me one of those uh, sodas in there? The Ooh, sodas $2 and pour it, soda, and Mr. Pour it, Fancy Pet. And pour it in a glass with some ice for me. Ew! What do you say, ew? Ew, your gum. You made sculpture with your gum on your... You're disgusting. It's kind of cool. No, it's not. It's cool. Uh, Jetsum says hi. Hi, Jetsum. Kieran says hi back. <laughs> and ice and cup. Are you effing kidding me? Yeah. Crushed ice, please. No, I've already, this is separate. And what kind of glass? Just like a glass glass. Seriously? Yeah. Uh, don't you love me? I don't think you know how this relationship works. I know, but I'm just trying it for today. It's a new thing. What do you think? <laughs> All right. Uh, so we got update. We have, we need a draw. We need a draw call. Where's the draw in game creature coming from? To screen before world render. Um, okay. So we need the call from here. This dot uh, condition manager dot draw. Are you the best? Oh, yes. fancy yes. cup. Look at this, guys. Do you think I'm going to drop it and spill it? <laughs> You're like the best. I should have asked you things like this every day. Is this a possibility for going forward? Sure, if we marry another baby. <laughs> Honey? Um, Jetsum's wondering if we can get some bacon in here, hon. Shut up, Jetsum! Could you just have, give me a plate of bacon? She said, uh, Jetsum, you watch yourself, buddy. And she said, traitor is what she said, actually. The fun part of uh, hanging out with you, Karen, is we get to go on, you know, either side of your, you know, of the line. Either we cross the line and we're close to the edge of, you know, being in serious trouble, or we're back and we're everybody and you love us because we're, you know, heaping praise and massages yeah, I on you. Praise. I, I just got you a drink. Well, I will give you this praise. You're really good at getting me drinks. Thank you. I like it. It's so good. Uh, so no bacon. <laughs> Jetsum's asking. So no bacon? No bacon? Hmm? Coding Gorilla is like... That's... Oh, look at something's being handed up to me here. Uh, looks like a uh, container of... Ooh, bacon. Bacon on the show. We should do a show where I just show different shapes of bacon and we just look at it. We just talk about it. What do you guys think about that? Eagle bacon. They want me to tell a story about something called eagle bacon. <laughs> Enough for the whole class, I hope. Yeah, well, I hope so. I think so right now. Enough. Um, 
All right, let's get our draw going in here. Okay, and I'm I think I'm starting to lose a little bit of focus, which is like, you know, not great because, you know, we're right in the middle of the thick of it. We need to kind of keep the focus going here. So I'm gonna do my best here to keep going. Um, just tap the next reference through here. So we're in the back overlay. Uh, the back overlay has a reference to the in-game creature manager, that file that's highlighted right there. So there's the in-game the condition manager. <laughs> Create a new instance of it. In the update call, we call update, so we're good there. We load resources and load resources. Uh, I want to switch the order of these. I want to put this after load resources. Nice way to get to the end of the file is, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. So I selection increase and then right arrow. Let's just get, when I said get the end of the file, I meant get at the end of the method. Uh, okay, so there's my update call and there's my draw. Conditions should actually be drawn on top of everything. Maybe behind these. And maybe behind the target. I'm going to put them above the target, but behind this. These these two lines right here, these do the, uh, the kind of fade-in animation uh, that you see, the little smoke that comes in. There's smoke that goes in there, or the smoke that comes from the top, or the sand, whatever you want to call it, that comes from the top. That's what these two lines of code do here. And so I'm going to draw those conditions behind that. So that's where those conditions will be drawn. Okay. All right, now we have to figure out how to add them, I think. Looks like mist to me, yeah. It's kind of a misty, but it's got that sand sound effect to it, so. All right, so let's uh, follow in the uh, from connection here. Uh, update in-game creatures. Here's where we, we parse it to an in-game command. What's the in-game command got? It's got an array of in-game creatures, sweet. We process the command. We're gonna to get to update, presumably. Let's just double check that. Yep, that's what we're sending. That's the command we're sending. I could change this to just update conditions. So I'm thinking about what happens when we do that. If we, if I change, if I create something new to just update conditions, we can handle it and we know whenever a condition changes to deal with it. The problem is that if we call, we make any change at all, like we say save all the data and we come in and load the new, a new game midway through from scratch, the regular update call that we, we call will not be able to handle that and, and, and uh, uh, handle the, um, the condition change. So I think I'm gonna keep it the same update. I'm just gonna make the update be really super general purpose. It's gonna check for all deltas between existing what's known down in the TypeScript file and what's being sent down from the C Sharp file. So it's gonna check all the properties that are in, in the in-game creature, including conditions. And if it sees a change, it's going to do something with that. That's what it's going to do. So, uh, so, the, so I'm gonna keep it as update. All right, so we're in update, updating game creatures. We're gonna come down here. Um, health change, animation delay. What is, this is update in game creature. I just wanna see what this is happening here. So the, so the delay is basically deciding um, when things will happen if I have many things that are changing. So it's like chunk, 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 chunk. It's that kind of thing that's happening. And uh, we just, this is just, we incremented by the time between moves. So we have like five coming in a second, I think. Um, uh, I think it's to the effect of, Charlie can demonstrate it. If I bring in like those six right there, and then I click on hide all. 
We should see them go off in about 1.2 seconds. Uh, it's got HP in it, is the name of our printer. Karen asked me a question. Make sure you're on uh, connected to the Zoe network, I think. I think you want to be on that network. Try that. I can give you more assistance after the show and help you out there. <laughs> okay, so uh, update in-game creature comes in here. We're passing over this data. Anything that is going to impact animation, it's going to require animation is checked. So I check to see is the health different? Is the image different? Is, is it an enemy or is it ally changed or is it friend foe status unknown changed? In which case we're changing the parchment. If the targeting, let's do this. Let's simplify. Let's start. Uh, let's refactor this. And by the way, I really started, as we've been using this, I really started to kind of like this. It's a little bit like it's a card game, right? So we can see the creatures that are there on the game and we can target them, right? So we have that ability to target them individually, like TLO, right? And I'm really kind of liking this. I'm liking this and, and uh, as we play the game, it's, it seems to be working. So, um, okay. Okay. Creature parchment is there. This is just transferring over the new, uh, the new data. This I'm going to refactor to update creature target. I'm copying that to the clipboard because I think I'm going to refactor again with a similar name. Um, and what's cool about this is now we're going to get, try to get more symmetry here. This one is whether the turn is active or not. That. Maybe I'll change this to creature is active. not showing health yet on this. See so if we get any new health. And what else? Do I have anything else up here? Here we go. This one. Update creature health. Wait, 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 wait. Before I do that. I need to take this and I think put it up above. No, 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 I don't. This actually needs to come above. This whole thing needs to go in that order. Um, we're we'll say uh, update. Okay, so now We've refactored, uh, and it's a little simpler. It's long because we've got we're, we're transferring over these pieces here. Um, all right, so now I want to add a line of code here that's looking like something along these lines here. It, it actually is going to look a lot like this. It's going to see if, uh, hold on, let me use duplicate selection instead. I think that might be work a little better. Uh, conditions. There we go. That was update creature conditions. So we're checking to see what the condition is and we've just changed it.
I want to hold on. I want to just mark this a second. I'm going to come back. I want to see what we're doing on the uh, in the front game. No conditions is is just an enum. It's just this. Actually, a tap to next reference here would have been interesting. Here. This is in the condition manager. All right, I want to see if existing player stats, I want to refactor this. Because I bet you insisting player stats is exclusively used to just reference the conditions property. Oops. Here. What's going on here? Player ID. But only the player ID, ID here. All right, we're gonna fix this. Well, shoot, player ID is right there. Coming in. I'm gonna get rid of this. I'm gonna assume this is all gonna still work. Existing player stats is gone from add condition. Where do I get it? player ID from? Just making sure. Yeah, it looks like it's, it's used in multiple places. Yeah, it's used right there. We're good. We're totally good. All right, so back to add condition here. <laughs> what happens to this when I format the dot? Yeah, it does that. Okay. <laughs> I'm also not using nameplate renderer or context apparently inside of here. Let's clean them up. Nameplate renderer and context are going to both be removed. Better. Okay, back up here. Exclusively used to access the conditions. So now let's change this to just pass in the conditions. Call these existing conditions. Change them right over there. And change them right here. And uh oh. We got an assignment though. Um we'll change it to a return. Returning conditions, and then we're going to say this is equal to that. All right, so there's my assignment. Now, what's going on with latest player stats? That's the next thing I want to look at. Only used, it needs the player ID. Are we passing in the player ID? We'll pass it in. Maybe. Player index, what am I doing with player index? Get condition scale. To be fair, I don't need any of this in uh, down below. This is all player related stuff. 
uh, get the nameplate left edge. I don't need any of that either. So that implies I need to really extract a function here. Um, I think this is what I'm looking at. I'm going to extract this. I'm just going to call it update conditions. So that work we did to refactor this, although it was okay, it's actually not, I think, necessary because we're not going to ever call this. Anything with the word player in it, we're not going to call from down below. So we've got update conditions now. I'm going to change frame index here to condition index. There's a better name for it. Let's look at, uh, let's go into remove name. Let me go get that on the clipboard. I'm going to just change this as well. Change the Good. Yeah, I didn't like how I was using frame index there. It just felt, felt too um, connected to the animation. And I want to I want to change it to condition index. That's what I want to do. Um, good. So everywhere that's being compared, it's now the condition index. Um, backing out. And let's look at add condition. Frame index is now going to become condition index. So condition for index. Good. Good. All right, <laughs> remove condition with animation, not using condition state. Um, let's clean that up too. Just kind of going through the code here, cleaning it up when I see opportunities to do so. Working my way back, I've got update conditions call now. Least player stats. Good. Uh, this is going to now be my compare conditions. That's what I want to do here. So update conditions, least player stats dot conditions. That's what I want to pass in. Compare conditions. Good. Okay, so what are we passing into update conditions? All of this, the player ID, what's the player ID is needed? Let's see what's going on with player ID here. Remove condition, player ID. Player ID. Okay, this could be really the, the creature ID. I'm going to rename this creature ID. I think I'm going to do this. Rename this. Rename this. Okay. Rename this, 
that looks better. Okay, nameplate left edge. One condition to rule them all. We call this the right edge. So this is where we line the condition up with. Why do I need get player X? Let's look at that. Ooh, we need to add, we've got an add condition call here that uses get player X. This is player specific code. Also, it gets a hue shift on the condition as well. Um, just working through how to solve this. Um, This is all just to get, apparently, just to get the hue shift. <laughs> Same thing with players. Uh, I think I'm going to take all of this and pull it out. like this. And I'm going to pass in, uh, that's going to simplify this, it should, it should at least. Let's see what we get out of this. Players is not used anymore. So add condition, we don't need to send in players. And looks like we're also not using get player X anymore. Good. Q shift needs to be passed in. There's Q shift. All right now, that is better. Player ID. I forgot what I, where I got player ID from. Oh, it's creature ID here. Creature ID is greater than or equal to zero. Then, and players, all right. Now I feel like that's got a shot of working. Uh, the, uh, I get player X. I think I also want to check to see if that's got something in it too. I'm going to give it a default of equal to null. And also what about players? What do we do with players in here? Is it only used here? I want to pull this out of here. I really do. I don't like the, the uh, asymmetry here. I want to just go to this and I want to pass in hue shift. And now we're finally at a method that has the word player in it right there. So I'm going to do something like this. Just 
to the player ID. Pass in hue shift there, update conditions. Go hue shift at the end. It looks like we don't need that anymore. Is that what this is telling me that it's not being used? Yeah, declared never used. Players is not used anymore. Let's get rid of players. Okay, I actually like this refactoring where we're going with this. Um, all right, I like the symmetry down here better. This is better here. Uh, I want to Yeah, Roy's not here today. <clears throat> Time for Roy to leave, but he's not here. Kieran Chicago, are you still here? Nope. I love you. You're amazing. I just, all I want to say. You want me to fill in for Roy? Yeah, you want to fill in for Roy? Oh, yeah, refactor Refactored. I am refactoring. I've been refactoring the whole show. Try looking at the thing in parentheses. I didn't look at the thing in parentheses yet. The brackets. The brackets, I didn't do that either. <laughs> Go clean my house, but we can still have a, uh-oh, here it comes. Good dance, honey. Some of my best moves are here on the show. <laughs> I'm working on a bacon party. Mmm, bacon. Look at this, kids. This is like one of two tubs that I made the other day. It's awesome stuff there. Disgusting. It, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah, I'm a big fan of bacon. When I make it, I, I do like about six pounds at a time, like six packages and two pans, two giant pans. Disgusting. It's not disgusting. <laughs> All right, don't divorce me. Not yet, at least. Divorce bacon. Oh my God, it's not divorce bacon. That's not what it's called. You can't just put the word divorce as an adjective on anything I like. Yes, I can. You cannot do yes, that. Can. It's not okay. All right, uh, I think it's really good time to see if this thing is, if we've broken anything, to see if this still works. So uh, I'm going to refresh the Dragonfront overlay. Uh, we're going to uh, refresh the data. And uh, let's uh, start throwing some conditions in. It looks like it's still working. That's great news. Fred agrees. All right. Do the same thing. Uh, let's go over to me. Uh oh, uh oh, what happened there? Why did grappled come up three times? Oh man, we broke something. Next time you make bacon, check out million dollar bacon. Uh, I gotta check that now, but look at my bug. I don't like that bug at all. Yeah, Fred's, Fred's like, he doesn't like the bug either. Um, hopefully that won't be too hard to find and fix. Uh, let's take a break for like 30 seconds to check out Million Dollar Bacon. Ah, Keto says I can't eat it because of the brown sugar and maple syrup, yeah. But uh, yeah, I bet I would love it if I was not on keto. It looks really good. Thanks for that smoothie, I like it. Okay, what's going on with Fred? Why, wait, how did we break this? What's the code change? Turning off grapple, do they all explode? And oh my God, it doubles up? Really? I'm glad we checked it. Uh, so 
So it, yeah, it's doubling them up. It's not able to, it seems like it's not able to find them. So if I hit blinded, we should see those two blinded go away. What? I just hit blinded and threw up a bunch more. Oh my God, there's blinded. Now it shut them down. Charmed. Wow. Hit deafened. I got one there and one up there. What a, what a sad, funny mess we've made. Um, and then frightens are left. Wow. It's only when we do another player. It's as if it can't find the player. If I'm just messing only with one buttons on one, it seems like it's good. But once we start involving a second player, Let's put one blind, uh, blinded up for me. Let's go over to Lady and do blinded for her. Do charm for her. Yeah. Deafened. So deafened didn't do anything, but charmed did. Charmed. So when there's a change to Lady, Merkin gets it doubled up, whatever he's got, it seems like, or gets another one. Is that right? Let's do a change for Lady again. Turn off Deafen. Nope, we didn't get one that time. Turn it on. Turn it off. Turn it on. Okay, when Lady gets a new one, Merkin gets a repeat of that. Is that right? Yeah, I think so. Every time we get a new one here, Merkin gets whatever his base is. Uh, let's go back over to Merkin and turn off Blinded and see what happens. This is where I saw some really crazy stuff. I hit blinded now for Merkin. Nothing happens. One more time. We add one. One more time. They all go away. And over there we get what appears to maybe, is it doubling up? Is that what it is? Let's do one more test here. Uh, blinded, blinded, and then one more. All right, so let's do two for Lady. And then let's go over to Merkin. Yeah, I'm with you, Judson. And now we're going to say, thanks for that. I'm going to say deafened for Merkin. Nothing is now happening for later. Oh no, there's your double. But now the double occurs when Merkin loses something. Well, it's not really a double. It's a recreation of that. Oh, it's disheartening. I'm not sure where the bug is. Let's go to clear ladies. <clears throat> Let's see if we can get a um, the simplest. For, we can maybe find the bug if we're lucky uh, by just finding the simplest reproduction case on it, which seems to be a lady having one, and then we go over to Merkin and we add one. Now we take one away. I think this is where the reproduction happens. There. So the next time I hit it, the bug will occur, and lady will get a new one. Um, Update conditions. My compare condition seems to be wrong. Well, I suspect it's somewhere in in this space here. I think it's in that refactoring where but I actually don't need that refactoring. I'm going to kind of undo that. I don't see how that's causing the problem just yet, but I am going to undo this.
Yeah, I don't see how this is going to fix that. But let's try it. Let's do a refresh. Refresh the data. Did it really fix it? Because that's a little weird. Oh my gosh, it seems like that fixed it. I do not see. I don't understand that. That was, a, that was I guess, lucky and fortunate. I'll totally take that. I don't understand why setting it here was any different. Oh, because of this. We were sometimes returning and changing the, the, the state instead of actually returning the value for it. Um, interesting. I wonder why it didn't highlight this return for us. If we change this back to a uh, conditions, I think it would say, sorry, this is not a condition. It's not, that would be a expected hint. All right, so that looks like that's the fix. That's good news. All right, so let's uh, clear those up. Okay. <laughs> hey, how you doing? Just saying hi. Hey, could you put this in the fridge for me? All right, bug is fixed. Um, Excuse your face, sir. <clears throat> Excuse your face, sir. Uh, bug is fixed. Uh, let's keep going. So we want to call update conditions. Um, and then we want to store them afterwards. We need to find the, uh, nameplate left edge. Hold on. Yeah. The nameplate left edge is the right edge of where we're going to show it. We need the scale to figure that out. And I think that's it. So basically we're looking at like two lines of code like this. Those are the two we kind of need. Um, all right, I think we're over here. And let's go back to update creature conditions. Uh, oops, sorry. Let's go back over to this version of it. Update conditions. Uh, wait, is that it? No, it's this one. Update player conditions. I see. Okay. All right. So that's in the condition manager. So let's see. Do we have the reference to it here? Yeah. So now we want to say update conditions like that existing conditions. So that would be existing creature dot conditions updated game creature dot conditions the creature ID what is your ID index I think it's the index is what we're is what we're using. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's a negative number. <clears throat> the right edge. Let's get it around the middle of the screen for right now. The scale, I'm gonna make it one for now. Let's actually create a, a variable for it though. Let's 
Sound manager. Do I have a sound manager here? Looks like I do. In the hue shift. Should be a zero for now. Um, I'm gonna ignore these uh, hints for now because we're not. That's a final code. Uh, after doing that, then I want to do this. I want to assign that there. That's what I want to do. Now, update conditions. Let's go look at this. This is where we're going to start to need to flip the code around to work upside down with gravity going the opposite direction. Let me get rid of these guys here so we can see all the code here on screen. Let's look at add condition. Prepare condition for entrance. So we have to change this code so it works with uh, being thrown from the top of the screen instead of the bottom. So the key is to this is finding create the sprite. It's passed in. <clears throat> All right. So that's its target location. Bottom edge Y. So here's our first issue right here, which is where are we going to put it? So let's, let's do this a piece at a time here. I think we need to uh, throw an enum on here as well. that. Okay. So if it's normal, the world world view is normal, uh, then we're going to say the bottom edge Y is equal to 1080 minus existing stack height. Um, otherwise, the bottom edge Y is equal to something completely different. Um, I think it's this plus... Um, scale. So 
the bottom edge of of this this is where we want to put it where we want to target that thing get that thing to move to is going to be that uh, time scale. Now if we just make the, only that change, it should still work. And we might be able to start seeing it work uh, up here where, but instead of being thrown from the, um, <coughs> thrown from the top, it'll be thrown from the bottom still, but it should reach it, right? If all the math and the code is good. Uh, let's make sure that add condition is reflecting that world view. And let's do this as well. Update conditions. And here's where we want to flip it. Worldly view flipped. Okay. I think we got a shot of actually seeing for the first time that this is going to work. All right, refresh. All right, just. Just for sanity, I'm gonna go in and add some, uh, oops, let's go, we gotta refresh the data, forgot to do that. There we go. Good, good, good. That's all looking good. All right, let's now go to my, I'll show you the Stream Deck UI that I'm looking at. There's Stream Deck right there. So going in to targets, and I'm gonna target some creatures, 9, 10, 11, 12. There they are right there. And now I'm gonna go into conditions and I'm gonna to try to throw something at them. Nothing appears to be happening, it looks like. Nothing is happening on screen. I feel like we should at least see something. Um, All right. Well, let's clear some of this stuff on screen. Oops, wrong ones. I'm gonna go miles. Okay. So update in-game creatures, let's trace it through, see what's going on. Uh, you know what I might do actually? Let's do this instead. I'm suspecting a console log error. So let's go just open up the, uh, the back game here. Bring up the inspector, refresh it, and uh, let's go back to our characters. Show those that are targeted. Uh, we're seeing it in two different places because I've got the, you know, the console log up here in the back. Um, Let's do this. I'm going to turn off the main overlay. I just turned off the dragon front overlay. Oh, it's in the back. Sorry. All right, hold on. Let me turn that off. Let's go to the back. Is that my problem that I didn't actually refresh it? It's interesting. I'm turning it off and turning it back on. It's not refreshing, which seems to indicate this dragon back overlay in OBS is on the screen multiple times. Let me try refreshing the cache manually. There we go. Um, let's just see. I'm gonna just real quickly go in here. Let me get rid of this for a second and see what happens here. Um, one more time. Nope, I'm still not seeing anything. Oh, whoa. Hold on. Okay. I just want to restack them. 
Nothing happens when I restack them. So, so I think there's some errors and some problems here. Um, really, really interesting. So it's kind of working, but not exactly like I was expecting it was going to work. Also, the glow seems pretty extreme. It's as if multiple glows are being created, is what it looks like to me. And it could maybe just be that it's red, but it looks really, really bright uh, compared to here. Let's go bring up um, Lady, who's got a similar kind of, of uh, color adjustment on hers. Oh, interesting. I'm hitting Lady's conditions and nothing is happening. Oh, because she's in the other, she's on the other side that we turned off, the front overlay. Let me get that, refresh that. And now let's bring up ladies. Here we go. See, hers are not as intense. It seems like we're making a bunch. Yeah, that glow is definitely more intense, which would seem to indicate we are creating many of them, which I don't quite understand. So that's our, our bottom right is, should be at 960. That doesn't quite match either what my expectation is. 960, it's 1920. So that should be totally halfway through the screen. That looks like more, further than halfway across the screen. Um, yeah, so we got a couple issues, clearly. All right, let's clean up some of lady stuff here. And let's go back into the NPC monsters and clear up this stuff as well. I think it's weird as I create one and it's immediately just massively glowy. All right, well, we'll get it. We'll figure it out. Uh, poisons. That's gone. There's something below it. I'm not sure what it is. We'll just let that glow for a while <laughs> until we figure it out. Uh, let's uh, hide all those guys. <coughs> I just want to see, did we get any? Yeah. So we got no errors or warnings. We still have the same extra intense glow though here too. The same thing. So curious, curious. Uh, all right, we'll keep uh, looking at it. update conditions. It does seem to understand. Let's see if we can get the, um, I don't know, I got a couple options in terms of what to do here. Um, here's the world view flip. Right, let's continue to pass this in. It does seem to get the stack height correct. Bottom edge Y is there. <clears throat> All right, let's pass in the world view to here. Put it before sound manager. Oops, after scale though. All right, let's see what we can do down here. Yes, I'm just gonna go one line at a time, look at each line, see whether it's coming from the uh, above, the bottom or the top makes a difference. Um, and fall distance factor, now that seems to be accelerating this right here. The icon link. Uh, so fall distance PX is this. That's all the same. None of that changes. 
Okay, so that's good. Uh, the data. Let's change player ID to creature ID. Setting that up. Scale is the scale. That does not change. This changes. Let's do this. Um, Maybe call this a Y factor. And I'm going to say, hey, if uh, worldview is equal to then I'm going to uh, multiply that by the Y factor. So now my vertical thrust override is there. Uh, my velocity Y, I'm gonna multiply that by the Y factor. All right, so everything up to here looks good to me. I'm kind of creating this empty line between them, although I do kind of like this blank line up here. So everything above here looks good, like we made the correct change. The apex Y, this is the line at which we're gonna we're going to come back at. I think this is just times a Y factor here, just for the fall distance. Um, now we got this trouble in this below ground Y. Because that's like. I want to call it starting Y. Okay, otherwise my starting Y is equal to I almost think I can just say it's zero. Because it's gonna be off screen, because it's anchored to the bottom right corner. That's what I think it is. Now, distance from below ground to apex PX. Yeah, this should just be called distance to apex. I want to update the picture. Distance to apex. Is that here? I think that's now our starting Y. And I think the diagram is incorrect. Yeah, thanks Screech Rat. I, that's, I was like, is that what I changed it to? And I could not remember. 
So starting Y, the diagram's wrong. It needs to actually be pointing right here, not there. All right, so distance to apex. I think I want to also take this and I want to rotate this. I want to pop this up here like this. That's what I want to do. Just cleaning this up a little bit. So y equals 180, so this is all good. Um, all right, let's copy all of that. Let's paste it and cut it inside of paint so we get a nice clean image. And let's come up here and update the image. Okay, so there's my image inside of here. I was like, why does it look so small? It's because my Visual Studio was scaled out. All right. <laughs> All right, so there's what we've got. Uh, and so now distance to apex is going to be here. We'll turn this into a let. For now, starting y minus apex y, we're going to get a negative number here for distance to apex in the flipped world view. Get drop time in seconds, that's not going to work for get drop time in seconds. Uh, so I think I want to do math.abs here. What else? Where else is this used? Why is tab to next reference not working there? It works now. Is it just because I just typed it in? Maybe because I just typed it in and haven't quite caught up with my changes. Okay. <laughs> and it's only used there to get the drop time. So in fairness, I actually could move this to here. Like that. Distance to apex. So now I think this is line is okay, and I think this line is okay. At the vertical thrust override, which we already multiplied by the Y factor. Drop time to land in seconds. The fall distance in pixels is equal to a positive number. All right, Get drop time to land in seconds, that is uh, we got a slight problem with the vertical thrust override here being negative. I think we're going to have to math.absolute this. Is that true? Because fall distance is always a positive, right? I think I'm going to say times y factor here. And I think that line is good now. I'm worried that, that my, my wrapping my brain around this is, is not great. I'm losing, I'm losing a sense of, of certainty here. Position into your map tools or stream. Hey Frank, uh, overlay. It's for an overlay is what it is. So it's the condition. So it's the same things as what we see uh, for 
D&D uh, &D players, these things. So we've already built these right here for Dungeons and Dragons players, like that. So they, these reflect the different condition states that you're in. Um, we're adding them to the in-game creatures. Hold on, I'll show you the, um, those are the, these are the in-game creatures right here. So we want to make it so that we can come in and, and add them there. And right now when we're putting them, we're changing the code. So instead of showing up here, they're pretty cool as usual. Thanks. Yeah, no, it is. It's pretty cool. It's also, it's really cool when you've got the stream deck right in front of you. So the buttons I'm looking at are right here and I'm just pushing these buttons, right? And as soon as I push them, seeing something flip fly on is cool. We've got some problems with it. The glow is too bright, which indicates we're building a lot of glows for it. And I'm not sure why that that's different. Um, and we're, we're making the code, we're changing the code so it comes in from the top and then circles back as if it were like the gravity was reversed for these guys. Um, that's what we're working on right now. So uh, I'm just going through this one line at a time. This code right here is the code that throws the icon up and lets it drop on the stack. And so we're just going through one line at a time to reverse everything. Uh, and uh, I think I've got to here. My throw velocity... Why? I figure out my final velocity. I'm multiplying it by a negative, but I'm pretty sure I want to multiply this by vertical thrust override. Hold on. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm worried about this. I'm worried about my brain and what it's doing and it's going to mess one of these up right here, I think, is the. It's a problem. Get final velocity meters per second. Time to apex seconds. I think I want to do that here. And I also think outside of it, I want to multiply by Y factor one more time outside of that result. I think that's what I want to do. There may be also a simpler way of doing this, uh, but I'm, I'm just not sure. I'm just not sure what that is. Uh, Baratheon is now following. Thanks for that follow, Baratheon. Um, you know, we're doing a lot of C sharp and uh, TypeScript stuff here. So, you know, happy to have everybody join us. And, you know, we're just figuring stuff out. And uh, I should also tell you that we accomplished just about everything on the show using uh, it's my favorite combination to use when creating stuff. So, uh, all right, let's keep going here. Uh, get final velocity meters per second. All right, so I think that's right. Barely hanging on with my brain on this. Total travel time, these are both positive numbers. That shouldn't change, so that should be good. Now we're looking at the horizontal travel distance. All of this should be exactly, I'm not expecting any changes here. So let's do that. The sprite X, that line looks good right there. Throw velocity x, and this is going to be times the y factor here. I'm going to put it over on this side instead, so it's going to be y factor times that. Breathing says, happy to join you here. Came here from the Visual Studio channel. Excellent. Cool. Well, welcome. And, you know, feel free to, you know, hang out, comment, ask whatever questions you have. You're in for a treat, says Coding Gorilla. We'll see. Let's make it work first. <laughs> Let's get this going and make it work. And then we'll uh, we'll be like talking about treats. Um, speaking of treats, pudding is here. And uh, all right, so we'll... Uh, you know who we haven't seen in a while? Surly Dev. I've not seen Surly Dev in a while and I'm like kind of, I'm starting to miss him a little bit. Where is Surly Dev? You two guys talk all the time, really? Wait, he just got on my show. He just watched my show to get so he could get to you. I don't know. Oh man, Brad, you know, I'm talking to my wife Karen Mangicotti over here in the room. She likes to hang out and tell me to refactor things. You should refactor. You should go refactor your office. Get that cleaned up. 
<laughs> okay, so we think throw velocity is good because I'm multiplying by y factor, so I'm going to throw the opposite direction. My sprite y is equal to this. This is going to all be the same. That looks good. Recalling change velocity, passing in those two pieces there. That should look good. That should be good. The, playing the sound should be good. Setting the timeout should be good. I think we got a shot of this working. So let's go to the back. Um, where is it there? The back overlay. And again, we're not, for some reason, the back overlay is not refreshing as easily as I wanted to. I've got to look into my stream deck stuff. There's a forced refresh of it. And where am I? I'm in uh, the right place. Okay. Okay. Kind of interesting. And if I take them off, oh wow. And they're falling the wrong way when I take them off. Okay. But at least they're going in the right spot when I put them in now, at least. So that's kind of where we're, we're looking to put them. They're immediately appearing. So clearly there's a problem with the animation. We need to figure that out. What if you destroy a middle one? Well, I think what's going to happen is that they're all still going to fall to the bottom. Interesting. Yeah. I'm, I'm destroying and adding the new one back and forth is what I'm doing. Uh, blinded, uh, grappled. So we got to make that movement correct there for when we destroy them. Uh, I kind of want to fix the destruction part first and then come back over here is what I think I want to do. It's a little weird. Yeah, I broke it, says <laughs> pudding. Yeah, I think I broke it. But this part... Yeah, as soon as you take one out, they fall down. Uh, but putting them on, the stack is correct. It's getting in the right spot. Um, all right, let's figure it out. Can you please explain what you're doing when you can? Love to hear what this is about. This is for Ethian. Yeah, let me give you the bigger picture on this. So uh, we're creating special effects and uh, in-game graphics for a live Dungeons & Dragons stream here on Twitch. And uh, so we have things like the, st the scroll that we built that shows this player stats, for example. Um, we've got weapons that the player can pick up and uh, they can roll the dice and we can see if it's a hit or not, for example. So we built all of this. Everything you're seeing here, we've, we've built. So this goes live over the Maximum show. Damage. Multiple folks are, uh, are live players are out here, uh, plus Fred, who's uh, over there. Um, Fred is a digital puppet and I can just uh, punch the buttons in there. Did you check the, no, I haven't looked at that yet. I've got it written down. I've even forgotten what TOC is, but I have it written down in my notes. I haven't looked at it yet, uh, but I will. I'll look at that probably after the show today. So Fred's a, Fred is a, uh, we need more WMS craziness. All right, I'm going to take a look at it. Fred is a digital puppet, so I can point at him and he can point back at me, that sort of thing. Um, we can, in Dungeons Dragons, there's something called conditions, and we have these working for the players down below. That's what we're working right now. And so I can just push the buttons there and the conditions come on, or I can take them off and they kind of reset there. And we, you can see we're going for kind of a natural feel here. Um, that's kind of what we're doing. Uh, so like, for example, when the dragons come up, when we're gonna make a roll, let's do like a skill check or something like that for miles. There's the dragon coming up. I can add advantage, right? Or change it to disadvantage. Right, so you can see what's going on here. We're getting a visual rep representation. We're building a UI, a, a user interface that the Dungeon Master can use. The Dungeon Master is controlling everything using one of these stream decks right here. So I just push this button there and I get like advantage over there. I push this button over here and now I'm gonna roll two. And then when I'm ready, I say, okay, let's do a skill check, acrobatics, like that. It switches to that scroll, rolls the dice. And so you can see uh, there's Miles and, and my dice are out there. And then we get a summary at the end, who succeeded, who failed, that sort of thing. So that's what we're building. Um, all kinds of stuff built into here. I'll show you one more thing just to show you how over top it gets here. 
Uh, go in here to my player, choose the spells. We built that as well. I'm gonna go into Chaos Bolt. I'm gonna say spell, cast it level four. And here comes the Chaos Bolt, Bolt spell. <laughs> Chaos Bolt lets me choose my damage type between poison and cold. So uh, I can do that and uh, apply the damage. That's really good. So that's kind of a little bit about what's going on with what we're doing. Specifically today, specifically today, Lady Signatic Bag of Holding, you really want to show that? All right, we'll do it. Here's one more spell cast for you. Um, hypnotic Pattern. And let's cast it. So, so kind of cool. Um, notice we also have over here, we have the, uh, uh, the indicator that the spell is being concentrated on. Right there, hypnotic pattern, I think lasts 10 minutes. Uh, if I advance the clock, the game clock, by uh, a minute, one, oh, it looks like it was less than that. There it is. And there's the dispel. So you can see what we're what we're going for here. We're going for like over the top, high quality uh, effects. Let me get out of this breakpoint. And something that can go that can support a live game of Dungeons and Dragons. Um, if you're interested in that show, you want to take a look at it. It's out here. I think we saw a link to it already. Um, okay, no worries, Verathian. There's your what we're doing. Okay, we'll see you. See you next time. Uh, anyway, there's a link out there if you want to go follow the other show to see that. Okay, let's figure out why, you're welcome, let's figure out why these are not moving in the direction we want to want to uh, see them move. Uh, I thought the code looked good in here, but it did not. It feels like we're getting the travel time in milliseconds is potentially a problem because it feels like when I bring them in, they pop up immediately. They're just like pop there. Um, And the fact that we're hearing the sound indicates there's no errors in this code. The setting the timeout. This is what's called when it's landed. The condition state final X and Y. Where are we setting those? That is in our constructor for the condition state. Which is, we're just using the sprites X and Y as we come in here. Yeah, I'm feeling like my problem is here. Uh, is it here? Maybe? Oh, I don't think it is. <laughs> uh, I think what I'm gonna have to do is we're gonna have to let's uh, console log this see what it is and uh, let's go get over here refresh this send the new data to it um, I'm going to turn off the, the overlay on the stream for a second so we can see it over here in the background. Hit the buttons. 
Um, what's happening here? Oh, I'm in the wrong one, I bet. No, I wasn't. I was in the one for the uh, main players. Maybe the main players we need to get them on screen. They are on screen, actually. Okay. Why aren't conditions working here? Oh, okay. So, all right. So that part's cool. We got not a number. All right. So our, our theory was correct that it was just jump. The travel time was not working out. So that means one of these two are not a number. Is one of these square rooted? Yeah, it's expecting a positive number for height of meters and acceleration. Vertical thrust override. Yeah, I think I gotta throw a Y factor in here. My guess is it's this one. I think it's that one right there. Let's try a quick refresh and see if we get any better over that. That's really funny. I, it's, uh, why am I reversing my, my horizontal velocity? Pro velocity, X. That's my problem. Pretty sure that's it. All right, let's try refresh there. Nice, better. Okay, we gotta figure out what's going on with this glow because the glow is making me crazy. All right, uh, also when I like take away Charmed, we're totally falling in the wrong direction. Uh, Deafened, yeah, it's, Treating that as if it's the top one. See what, yeah, all of that code's gotta be fixed. I wanna go after this glow problem to see what's going on with the glow. The glow is uh, really bizarre to me. Right. And let's see if we can figure out anything with the glow just by doing a code review of this. Uh, okay. So this now feels like it's good. Uh, let's also just for, um, I wanna refresh the back and I wanna refresh the front overlay on the live stream. And let me do one other thing because I noticed my stream deck on my right is not responding. What's the best way to solve that? I think I've got to restart my whole Stream Deck software is what I have to do. Restart it. That looks like that fixed it. Okay. Uh, prepare condition for entrance. So here's, yeah, we go into condition glow. We add sh one shifted. That glow is just so intense. How are we adding more than one? It doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense.
Are we maybe drawing it more than once? Would that be happening anywhere? Oh, I bet we are. Here's the thing. I bet this is being called more than once. Which means this is called more than once. Add conditions. Are we not updating? in-game creature. Condition manager, update player condition. So we're not calling it through there. That one won't be called. Not from the, the uh, back overlay. Okay, so update conditions is only called from here. Update in-game creature. I think I'm going to hold off on getting this. I think we're missing a little bit of data and I think the data is going to reveal itself as we start fixing other problems. So I'm going to actually not go after this now. Uh, but, but I think the time we just spent was actually uh, useful because we got to a point where if I'm right, th then, uh, then it was useful to, to, to know the order in which we must, the, the order of the problems that we must solve. So we need to get the exposition correct. One of my theories is that multiple creatures are putting the same pieces on top of each other. That might be happening. Uh, <laughs> so update in-game creatures here. I want to figure out how I get that in-game creatures X position. Is it part of in-game creature? Does it store its X? It does not appear to do that. I just want to see what's going on here. Get parchment shadow for creature. Get parchment sprite for creature. That goes in and just finds it. Okay. If it exists, we're fading it out. Here we go. That's what I'm looking for. So now I want to use this down here. Let's try that. That's, I, that's an interesting change right there. I want to see what that does. That's why. Okay, so now we know what's going on here. We were apparently, when we're doing this, Oh yeah, no, I guess that does make sense because all four are targeted. Um, yeah, okay. Hold on, let's get rid of these a second. 
All four are targeted. Uh, yeah, the glow looks better because I was right putting four out, layering them on top of each other. I didn't kind of realize that. So if we come in now and we say, let's make all four of those blinded, then we change our targeting and we turn off, uh, what is it? Like that, we turn off uh, Genji and Lady Tarania's targeting, but we keep uh, Tielo and Cloudfur's. Now we go back into conditions and we say, let's add Deafened. It just comes out for those two. All right, better. Uh, and now Blinded. Okay. I think we got to work out the positioning of this. Where am I going to position this? I think I'm going to put it at the bottom of the scroll like right at the bottom of the scroll is what I'm going to do. So uh, the right edge here, we've got to say, get the X of that. Then we got to say plus, uh, probably condition manager dot, what is it? Icon, condition icon link times scale. And I think I want to change scale equal to a 0 0.5 for now. Maybe use a standard scale for these. So the right edge is there. The top is not going to be zero. Or the top of this. Let's go to add condition again. Here's the code that tells where we're going to stop it at. Stack height plus, plus this. We got to add at least one more. And then I think I want to do this plus. Um, player stat manager dot, and I think I've got, uh, I don't know, link height. So, hoping for a, um, creature scroll height. That's my bottom edge. Let's try refreshing that. See how that works. Okay, not bad. Uh, it's not quite creature scroll height. There's a a margin that we scroll that thing up. It'd be cooler if they stacked horizontally though. Coding Gorilla. <laughs> I agree, 100%. That's another day of programming though. I'm not sure I want to go that far, but yeah, it would be. You're right, we've got that space. Right, they go one, two, three across maybe. We, and we figure out the right scale for doing that and we just stack them up, absolutely right. And then when one, one pops, they all just kind of move. Uh, I think I'm gonna do it. Uh, stack them horizontally, then down to the next row. Yeah, Screech Rat agrees as well. We're all in agreement. It's, it's, but it is another day. I could do that tomorrow. 
Okay. Uh, let's figure out the right. Let's figure out what that offset is off the top. Um, where's my screw? Where is my parchment sprite? Sprite. So I'm gonna look for that parchment. Scroll. Your stat manager. This I'm in the wrong place. Here's where I want to be. Parchment background. When we add a new one, I want to see what the the offset is because it's. Here we go. Add shifted. X is passed in. Get X. Oh wait, sorry, not X. I want Y. Not X, Y. There it is, right there. Sorry, in-game stat top margin. Okay, that's what I want. So escape to get back to where I was. That. All right, let's refresh that and see if these now stack up right up against the edge. That's what I'm looking for. Better, 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 better. If I take them off the top, there's no shifting. Yeah, we need to get them to shift in the right direction. So that's like the next thing I'm going to work on. Okay, let's get the shifting to occur in the right direction. So uh, let's also make them a little bigger. I don't like how small they are right now. Um, let's do that. <laughs> um, Do I have a get hue shift here? I do. I can pass it in in-game uh, creature. Let's look at that, change. And uh, so those are red because of the, those guys are enemies. And now if we come in and targeting and we change uh, to 10 and 11 and turn off 12 and, 9, 12 and 9, and we come back in to conditions, better. Better. Yeah, I like it. It's not bad. I totally agree with you though. We need to make use of that whole bottom space right there. Um, but it's definitely getting better. Okay, let's uh, remove these and go get, fix that code. Go back and target nine and 12, turn off 11 and 10, and go back into conditions, blinded, and charmed for both of those guys. Okay. Stack a few from Lady, too. Uh, yeah, no, I will. I will, I will, I will. I think I know what you're talking about, getting them joined together here. Uh, let's go uh, target 11. So there's two ladies on screen. There's one there and one there. Uh, and we'll go and we'll start adding upside more targeted than I realized I needed right there. Uh, let's turn off 9 and 12. And... Now we'll, um, actually, I want to do the opposite of this. I want to turn on 9 and 12 and turn off Lady. Let's get rid of those for a second. And that, 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 that. All right, now let's go get to Lady, the character, and build them up. 
right? Like that. So for the players, it makes sense to stack them up. Uh, like that. So I'm okay with that. But these, we definitely want to at least have some sort of row support up there. <laughs> so we'll have to figure that out. It's, it's one of those thing, problems that's like, okay, you know, it's going to take like maybe three lines of code to make it work. But what are those three lines of code and where do those go? Right? It's going to be a little, we're going to learn something in implementing it. I think it's going to be fun and cool, but, um, but we need to do that. All right. Um, let's go get rid of Fred's stuff. Okay. And uh, let's get rid of Lady Tarania's stuff. So we can. Um, there we go. She's targeted. Go into conditions. Charm, deafened, fatigued, and frightened. Okay. Let's go up to players and hide all so we can see more stuff up there. I'll keep the grappled one right there on screen. Um, okay. So an update creature, wait, that's not where I want to be. Hold on. Conditions, update conditions, remove condition. Here's where we need that world view to pass that in. So I'm going to pass it in. World view is passed in here, right? Yes, good. Okay, we need uh, world view here. After scale, I'm going to add it. Okay. There it is after scale right there. And. Throw it in here at the same spot here. I'm going to remove condition with animation. Putting it in after scale again. Okay, that's that. Uh, all right, here we go. Animate sprites down. We'll look at an animated sprites down. We're gonna need that to be, can we keep it or are we gonna need to create a second one called animate sprites up? I think I can change it. Uh, to this. I'm going to pass in a world view. Right before the sound manager. All right, here... Uh, instead of putting anything here, this is stack player conditions. This is very specific for the players. I'm going to just assume that if it's not passed in, oh no, that's not going to work because I've got a sound manager coming in from those guys, I bet, don't I? All right, we'll just go ahead and explicitly say it. So we're going to say worldview dot normal. Okay, you've explicitly said it there. Animate sprites vi vertically. All right, hold on though. This one is good, but this one, this is stack player conditions. Yeah, I think we're okay here. 
Oh, no, wait. Stack condition sprites. This one. Yeah, I need to. Who's calling this here? One, two, two calls. find what it's called. I don't see worldview here in IntelliSense. Okay. I think we've got code that compiles now. Looks like we do. Let's incorporate that worldview and see if we can get them to move the other way now. Again, I'm going to look through each line and see if it makes sense to flip or change the logic based on a reversed <laughs> gravity. Start time is good. Index to move is good. Sprites above, I'm going to rename to just sprites. The which ones we send in though shouldn't be above or below. We should be above or below depending on the world view. So we need to actually do that. Uh, let me just put a quick to do here. Uh, make sure sprites pass in um, either above or below based on world view. All right, we'll implement that in a second. This is all good. Uh, target X. So the new X and Y are coming in. This must be the empty space of where we're moving to. The new Y is equal to that times, and then I need to get something similar to what we did before, where I say I have my like Y factor. And then I want to say, hey, if world view, So I should tell you all right quickly, I wrote this code right here. I've got Y factor on the clipboard. I typed in S1 like that, set to one, came down here, hit L space, came down here, typed in S negative one, like that set to negative one. So that's how I got that code pretty quickly. 
Uh, now that we've got that Y factor, I can move it multiply times this. Um, that code seems like it's the same. This code seems like it's the same. We're just easing to the new position. That's a good, okay, that's good. This is all good, I think. I think this is gonna work. Got a shot of it working at least, right? That's what we need, we need a shot. Let's go in, let's refresh. And uh, show some characters. And Lady Tarania is targeted, so let's go into her conditions. Let's add them. And now I'm gonna remove Charmed and hopefully they'll all go up. They did not even move. Uh, let's go to look at the front overlay, make sure we didn't break anything. Front overlay, refresh it. Go into Miles, add some conditions. And now remove. That's good, okay. Oh, you know what it is? I know exactly what it is, it starts to do. Right up here, make sure sprites pass in or either above or below based on world view. That's our problem. Okay, uh, so let's go figure that out. Yeah, I had the feeling I was gonna, uh, you know, let that slip and I did. Uh, sprites above, here we go. Here's my problem right here. I'm gonna pass in world view here. Oh, that's gonna be hot. I like that way better. I was about to do some other stuff. But it makes way more sense to just say, hey, these are above based on the view. So we'll pass that in there. It's sprites above. Who else is calling this? Just us. Just here. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Here's the logic right here. So. Um, trying to think of what the best way to do this is. I've got like a couple competing ideas here in my head. Uh, I think I'm going to go with the, what would probably be the traditional way of solving this. Uh, so if it's normal, it's that. Else, if, and I'm going to just switch it. It's not bad. I don't know. Something like that. The sprite is below, but really above in a flipped world view. Let's see if that works. Okay, yeah. Miles is still working. Um, let's see, got charmed. Still no movement. Why no movement? Uh, the sorting, we might have to mess with sorting too, but I don't think that's the problem. What's happening, what's happening if I get rid of Frightened? Yeah, it's not moving at all. Okay. All right, let's go figure out where, I, th I feel like we have a one line of code bug right here somewhere. Uh, remove condition with animation. So there it is there. Animate sprites vertically. What's my start Y here? Start Y looks suspicious to me. Also look at this, get stack height below. I got a problem with start Y.
All right, so that's the case there. Otherwise, start y is going to be equal to, we've got to get that opening position and we've got it, we're using, um, I don't know if we're going to reach it by uh, tabbing the next reference on this. Probably not without getting really lucky. Actually, that's not what I want to do. I want to go find... Um, it's over here in In-Game Creature Manager. And it's the parchment constant. I wonder if I can find it faster. Let's see. If I hit jump to symbol and type in parchment, well, it's not bad. Not named parchment. That's what I want. All right, creature scroll height. Let's go look through where we're doing using this. That is the top. I'm going to get rid of both of these. And I'm going to create a new constant here. And I'm not sure what I'm going to call it yet. It's going to equal that. Uh, I'm going to call it like um, in game creature scroll bottom, like that. All right. And then back where we are, oh, we've got it. It's condition manager dot that. Okay, then let's bring it back to where I was here. Here, start y I think is equal to that. That's what I think. Um. There was another problem we saw, I think, and I forget what it was. Hit stack height below. Oh wait, it's that. So this this line of code here basically takes what well, the sprite we're getting rid of and figures out how much space is between it and the bottom. So we want to do the opposite of this, find a sprite and find out how many pieces are above it. So I think we need a, uh, it's that plus get stack height above. And that looks and feels good to me. Okay. So now I'm going to go find this and I'm going to duplicate this, I think. Or can we just simply do this? I think I'm going to do this instead. Get stack height, it's not below or above. Um, or I guess I could just say it's below, but we'll pass in the world view. I think I have a logic error too. I think I'm missing a set of parens. 
Uh, let me go check the other one. I just realized that I might have that problem. It's a similar block of code here. Yep, so glad I remember that. So if it's normal, we're there. Otherwise, we're gonna go down there. That was the logic problem there. That is, I like it when I find logic problems before I see the bug, before I actually see evidence the bug exists. Okay, let's go back to where we were. Okay. All right, better, better cut. All right, this might work. Let's see what happens. We will refresh front and back. And uh, let's start bringing some stuff in here now. I'm hearing sounds, but I'm not seeing anything come in. Okay, sounds like a console log problem. Maybe. Sounds could have been coming from here. Nope, it was muted. So let's refresh over here. Refresh the data. See what happens. Oh, come on, really? What's this? Is this our clue? Player stat manager is not defined in the background. The background is here. It's not getting it. Um, I think I've seen this problem, and I think this problem means I got to restart or rebuild something over on this side here, which means I'm going to have to shut everything down and restart it if I'm understanding everything correctly. What I mean by that is, is I've got to shut down the overlay that's running, and uh, so I'm going to do that right now. Uh, it's going to take a second to go through it. Killing this, and I'll have to refresh everything. Killing that. Uh, do I need to rebuild here? I'm not sure about that. Let's maybe try it. Give it a shot. Rebuild. Probably just close that down for now. Let's also restart our uh, the D&D app as well. D and D app, sit and run up here.
Um, what happened? Uh, I needed to add a file reference and in, uh, into one of the, uh, into the uh, index.cshtml. This is the reference I needed to add because it wasn't seeing it. I think it might be related to the problem we're seeing. I hope it is. Uh, but in order to verify, I have to restart everything, uh, bring everything back up again. So let's do that. Let's bring those back up to the build. Rebuild all did succeed. It looks like that is the case. It is right there. Um, okay, so let's start everything up again. What I love is that the um, with the, even though I shut everything down, the music continues to play in the overlay from the Code Rush uh, drone game. I'm going to restart that. It's going to stop music for a second. There it is right there. Music stopped, but we should be able to come in and start up the music again. There it is. Okay. Now let's go over here and see if we've still got that error. Hopefully we don't have that error anymore. Uh, something different here though. In player stat manager, dice stack DTO. <laughs> What's that? Uh, I think it's because I'm not in the TypeScript. That's in Player Stat Manager. Sitting tab to mix reference, looking up here to see if this changes. Yeah, we've gone full circle. It's already been declared. Okay, I think I know the problem. I was wrong in my assumptions. It wasn't that it wasn't listed. It's the order wasn't right. Yep, there's two of them right there. Okay. I think we have a slight circular reference problem. It's, it's not defined because it hasn't seen that line of code yet. Uh, we need to kind of go back and see what the error is. I don't think I'll be, I think I have to restart everything again. Yeah, that's not happy for me. What, just out of curiosity, I think this is not gonna work too. Yep, uh, I think we got to rebuild one more time. Killing those apps again. Both apps are been killed. Let's rebuild again. Pudding's back. Welcome, Pudding. All right, let's start refreshing some things. It's still building. Right behind me, I've got the uh, the bar. There it is right there, you can see it. And it just succeeded, build succeeded. Just had food, so now I'm really happy. Perfect. Uh, I hadn't even noticed you were gone. Um, here we go. Let's refresh. Okay. Let's start up the apps. Both apps are starting up. Should be able to get the music back. I'm hitting the music button, but I don't hear it coming. What's going on? Drone game. Oh, I need to refresh it one more time, I think. There we go. Now I think it'll work. I'm hitting the button. There it is. Okay, it's working. Uh, okay, so now let's also refresh the other overlays.
Everything is refreshing. Do we have a control from here? Just looking if we had a control from here. We don't we have to restart that. Uh, actually, before we, we restart that, let's go verify that that bug is fixed now. Let's see where we are. At the very least, look at, be able to look at the bug. Okay, that looks good so far. All right, let's start the app up. Seems like it's taking a while to start. There it is. Okay. Connections are there and no errors still over here. That's good. Let's target some creatures. Let's go into conditions, add some conditions. And let's remove the conditions. I'm removing blinded. Okay. Oh, not bad. Not bad. Better for sure. Okay, we can get rid of this one right here. Get back to some code in the background. And uh, we can kind of look at the behavior and see what's, what we need to change. Okay, so let's get rid of blinded. Changes the order. Oh, it's that sorting. Remember the sorting at the end? I, I mentioned that. All right, so our calculation of the, the, the point we need to hit is wrong. But that's an easy fix. Let's go find it. Oh, you tried to sneak in before Ninja Coding Gorilla. But we restarted. And we lost track of who's been here. Uh-oh, don't tell Pudding. He might come back for a second one. I don't know if that counts or not. I think it does, but it would came in too close on the, you just need somebody else to send something to the chat room like this. Oh, maybe I'm wrong. No, oh man, everybody's like, but try me. It's all right, man. We've been going for a long time, haven't we? I'm gonna manually do it. I feel like I'm like an, uh, an actor. <laughs> I'm an actor. All right. We'll get you in a second, Pudding. We'll get you in a second. All right. So, looking back at this right here. Uh, let's get that code so we can fix it. It is, I think we're looking at it, the start Y. It's right here. Because these are anchored in the bottom right, we need to push that start Y, start y down. Yeah, we're getting close. We're getting, getting close. So this needs to go plus scale times uh, this guy right here. Oh, you know what? This is gonna show up more than once in here, I think. So I can see it three times in this code at least. So let's just drop a marker here. Let's drop a marker there. And let's drop a marker here. And we're gonna say, uh, Condition, icon, link. Spell link correctly. And uh, let's just hit escape and paste, escape, paste, escape, paste. <laughs> All right, let's see what we got. Get rid of blinded. Okay, not bad. It's just swapping the orders of these. And I don't want it to swap that order. Let's figure, figure out the swapping of order. 
I suspect it's due to a sort call. Is that it? Uh, no. It should be the next one. It should be... There's no other call to sort. Hold on. Is there a buffer on the left side of the player scrolls? Yeah. When you say buffer, I think... I, well, I'm not sure what you mean, Screech Rat. Um, to the left of these scrolls right here, these character scrolls, there is space for this, something like this. That's what's going on there. <laughs> but if that's not what you meant, l let me know. Let me understand. I'm not sure what you mean by buffer. Well, wait a second. Get sprites above is used. This might be the right spot. Let's try this. And I'm gonna just do the sort in the other way. Like that. Just see if that solves it. <laughs> oh. The condition icons look like they're a few pixels to the left. I totally agree. Um, it's on my list. We, we eventually strive for perfection. We move there a step at a time is what we tend to do. Uh, let's see what happens here now. All right, let's take away Charmed. And it didn't change. Sweet. Take away sleep, kind of in the middle there. It's looking good. Unconscious at the end. Better. That worked. It worked. It kind of worked. It kind of worked. I think I'm going to end the show on that. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, I see that too. They're like two pixels left of the scroll. They are. They're too far. The reason why is because the scroll's got some, uh, some extra space in there. I'm just thinking about getting these things to line up in like a wrap panel. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like thinking about whether I want to do that today or not, or whether I'm going to do that tomorrow. I think I'm going to switch it to tomorrow. Uh, we can get this. I, I know that's bugging you. It's bugging me too. Let's get that. We'll fix that. And that'll be the last bug we fix. And then we'll, uh, tomorrow we'll worry about the wrap panel and get working, making that wrap panel like behavior work. Yeah, that's gonna mess with get sprites above. It's gonna mess with a number of things, number of factors. We can do it. It's not too bad. I, I can see the changes in my head in terms of what needs to, to happen there. For, for It's just good, we'll change this to like get previous sprites or something like that. Um, we'll just need to figure that out. Um, let's see, remove condition with animation. I'm just working my way back to get to add condition. Name plate left edge. And this is going to be, this actually should be called like the uh, right edge. Go back to add condition. That's the right edge. Right edge is passed in. Okay. 
Here's the right edge here. We'll say plus uh, in game creature manager dot uh, condition margin. The selection increase to get up out of this. Uh, we can uh, out of this and. Uh, then we're going to declare a new, sorry, I know this is right behind that other stuff, condition margin. And let's say it's about six pixels. That's what I think it might be. Let's refresh and see if that looks better. Better? Yeah, much better. Okay. Now I should say that during the game of Dungeons and Dragons, it's rare that somebody's got even four conditions. So that's kind of a rare situation. Um, but you know, what, we'll, uh, we'll make it all work. We'll make it all work. Yeah, it's not bad. Um, I do like this. This is all working. Uh, let's ship it. All right, let's ship it. Let's do it. And let's just make sure the bottom side of things is uh, working. Uh, let's go in here, conditions. Oh, is it, are we really not working somehow? Did we break the bottom? I can't end the show with that bug. How do we break it? How do we break it? I suspect there's a console log issue is what I suspect. Let's go in to my conditions here and get rid of these, clear all these up. Right here, yeah, I know. No, no. No. Yeah. Mother oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you. <laughs> I'm with you. Okay, let's see. I'm, 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 a, I'm really hopeful there's a console log that's gonna tell us exactly what our mistake was. So let's go see if we can find that. We need to go to the um, the front, Dragon front overlay. And uh, let's uh, refresh that. Does anybody know what's happening? Uh, only the console log knows. Oh, look at this. Player stat manager is not defined. And it's the same problem from condition manager. Player set manager needs to come first. That's the problem. So we got to go to the dragon front overlay right here. Player set manager has to come before the condition manager, right? That's what we just said. I think that's what I said. Yeah, I think that's my fix. Unfortunately, that I don't think is going to get solved if I just do a refresh here. Yeah, that means I've got to shut everything down again one more time. Uh, here we go. Shutting down the overlays. That's number one. I've shut it down. Um, shutting down Mr. Announcer Bot. He shut down. And got a rebuild, I think, to get... The, the, the right code generated. Going to have to shut down uh, this guy too. Just watching the build. Okay, looks like that succeeded. Uh, build succeeded. Let's start those pieces back up. And let's go over here. Yeah, it's funny, right? I just added that one constant reference and that one constant reference uh, took us out, right? <laughs> Had to restart everything. <laughs> Now's your chance. Um, yeah, I, 
I would say the same thing, but Coding Gorilla didn't go this time, so there must be some. Is it wait because? Let's see. Are the pieces up? The pieces are up. Let's go refresh a couple things here. Let's see what happens here when I press some buttons. Um, okay, let's get our drone game up and running again. Let's uh, get the music. Let's refresh. Let me change the genre here. And there's my background overlay right there. Let's refresh that. Uh, inspect this. Yeah, that fixed the error right there. Isn't that weird? I have to like shut everything down, do a rebuild just for that kind of thing. Any changes to the file structure? Um, I find it slightly distressing. Uh, okay, here we go. We're refreshing the overlays. Those are good. And uh, let's let's see if we're fixed or broken now. That was all we needed, right? It was just de declaring that one constant. <laughs> Coding Gorilla says that strikes me as odd. Remember that the compiled version of that, that has the list, all of that, that's all running live as we're do supporting the show. So I can create all the classes I want as long as I don't change the files here. Changing what files I have the, here causes a problem. And I think it's because it's got to generate the JS files and I can't make changes here live. I cannot make changes to this list live. That's the, what, the experience that I've seen. So just to confirm that all of this is working, there's Fred's, those appear to be working. Uh, let's uh, bring up uh, these guys. Let's target uh, 10 and 11. Let's give them some conditions. Those appear to be working. Yeah, all right. I'm gonna call that a show. That's what I'm gonna do. Kids, thanks so much for hanging out with us. Uh, let's uh, get a raid set up here, see what we're gonna raid you to. Do you see those zoom from the right side? Uh, I thought I saw something weird with uh, Blinded, but I think that it might have been okay, is what I think it might have been. Uh, let me just double check, let me hit a few more buttons. I want to try to get it to a bad state, and I can get it by hitting a lot of buttons, like a couple in a row. It's not seeming to work very well here for me. Hold on. Um, uh, let me get the order right. One, two, three, four. I think that'll do it. Nope. One, two, three, four, five. There, there. Now I want to hit my restack button. Ooh, restack doesn't work. Oh, <laughs> my restack doesn't work. So I'm gonna, I'll write that down. I'm gonna, we'll end the show still, but I'm gonna uh, write that down. So my, um, for tomorrow, restack, uh, needs to work restack for uh, in-game creatures, uh, restack conditions. Um, all right, who are we raiding? I'll send you over to Bald Builder to Builder. Go say hi to him. Have fun, kids. Yeah, Screechat says I saw something too coming in from the side. I'll look for that. It's uh, icons coming in from the side. See if I can duplicate that. All right, kids. Till next time, we'll see ya. Thanks so much for your help, guys. Appreciate it.